we have a lot of stuff to talk about from lots of day one Xbox Game Pass games coming from the ID at Xbox showcase in a brand new episode of Into the Starfield. So yesterday was the ID at Xbox showcase and there was lots of stuff that were shown off. There are just various games shown off, games coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one, as well as games that are available right now to play. So let's take a look at some of the stuff that was shown off. Firstly, here is the list of every single Xbox Game Pass title that was confirmed at this showcase. And it's a very large list of a lot of really awesome games. The first one being out of them all that is available right now to go ahead and download is Tunic. This one shadow dropped onto Xbox Game Pass. We knew it was an Xbox exclusive or at least a console exclusive for now. And we didn't think it was coming to Xbox Game Pass because there was absolutely no announcement for it. And then yesterday they surprised everybody at the ID at Xbox showcase saying that you can go ahead and download Tunic right now and start playing it. Now, this is a game I'm extremely excited for. One of the games I've been most excited for since they first showed it off. And after I played that first demo of it, I knew it was going to be great. It already has been getting tons of reviews and they've all been very positive, getting lots of nines, lots of 8.5s and 9.5s, stuff like that. It's being very well received. So very excited to finally be able to jump into Tunic. Now, besides Tunic, which was the big surprise release, I would say Crusader Kings 3 is coming to Xbox Game Pass. And this game we already knew because they had announced it the other day when they gave us the second half of March Game Pass games. There was a lot of funny videos with like T-Pain going through being playing the game and just coming up with all these wacky rules for the society that he was running. Then we have Immortality, which is just like a narrative style of game. They're just interactive narratives and you're going to be able to watch them, I guess, and make selections and then something will change the, the outcome of what's going to happen. Trek to Yomi coming to Game Pass. And this is that samurai game that they showed off at the state of play and it's coming to Game Pass on day one. Looks very, very cool. So a game that I'm gonna be checking out when it comes. Escape Academy, this is just like a, an escape room game. You're gonna be able to play that with your friends. Shredders, out today. And that is the snowboarding game that everybody is looking forward to. Can't wait to jump in to start shredding the hills. Then we have Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. Game we already knew that was coming over to Xbox Game Pass as that was announced the other day. It's the follow-up to Ashen or the next game from those developers. And Ashen is like that soul style game with the cell shaded graphics. And this one seems to be going more in a realistic style of graphics look. But from what we've heard about Ashen or from what I've heard about Ashen, because I haven't played it, from people who have played the game, it sounds like Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn is something to look forward to based off of how good Ashen was. Next up, we have Floppy Knights, and this is a game that looked interesting. It's like a tactical RPG with cards. So it's like a card based tactical RPG, which is interesting because we talked about a game that they had announced on Xbox Game Pass coming in the end of March. The next game coming to Xbox Game Pass is Floppy Knights coming sometime in 2022. And this one's interesting because it's like a tactical RPG with cards, with deck building. And we had talked about a game that got announced for Xbox Game Pass yesterday called Tainted Grail Conquest. And I said that that was the first time I had seen a game like that within Xbox Game Pass with the deck building and the RPG mechanics and all that type of stuff. And it looks like Floppy Nights is gonna be another one along those same lines. Following that, we have Paradise Killer, which is like a first person adventure game where you're trying to solve a murder that's actually available right now on Xbox Game Pass if you want to go check it out. Following that, we have Kraken Academy, which is just like another RPG adventure style game with pixelated graphics. And you're, it takes place in a high school and you're trying to solve the mystery that's going on in the high school with ghosts taking over the high school and cultists and stuff like that. So that one sounds pretty interesting. That's actually out very soon into Xbox Game Pass. So March 22nd, you can expect that one. Then we have Beacon Pines, which is kind of like a cutesy style of adventure game where you're going out to try to solve the puzzles and the things going on in the world by finding words that actually like change the storybook that you're going through. So there's that. And then there's Citizen Sleeper, which is a, an adventure role-playing game in sort of like an intergalactic, I guess, cyberpunk or like outer space style of setting. So that's a lot of games coming over to Xbox Game Pass. In fact, that's 12 games coming over to Xbox Game Pass, some on day one, some already available, and then others in the future. So lots to be excited about, lots of awesome games that are coming to Xbox Game Pass on day one or just at some point in the future. 
And that wasn't the only stuff that was awesome at this showcase. They showed off many other games here. I'm not going to go through them all because there are a ton and kind of already talked about a lot of the ones that were coming to Game Pass on day one. But a few of the other ones that really caught my attention was this one here, and it is Cursed to Golf, which is a roguelite golfing game where you're going through kind of dungeons, but you're golfing and you're going to die over and over again before you finally get the ball into the hole and it just looks super cool looks like there's gonna be a lot of strategy involved if you like golfing games you like road light games this may be one for you to check out i know i will be checking this one out when it comes out and the other one that really caught my attention here was this one here called wrestle quest now this looks really awesome you're going to be playing as a wrestler and it's an rpg and you're going to be going and leveling up your wrestler and going through the life of what it's like when you are a professional wrestler and beyond so this i mean looks awesome i love the graphics love what they're going for with this one and we'll definitely be checking out wrestle quest once it releases so overall a very fun show to watch lots of great stuff to look forward to and stuff you're going to be able to jump in right now i mean it's really exciting because we have tunic that got just shadow dropped in xbox game pass that i think a lot of people were ready to pick up and buy anyways because it's a game a lot of people were excited for and now you don't even have to worry about that because you're going to be able to go out and try it on game pass and then as well today we have shredders dropping which it's great all these indie games look awesome i absolutely love indie games i play a ton of them especially because of xbox game pass if it wasn't for that service i probably wouldn't be playing a lot of them probably won't even know half of them exist so i think xbox does a great job showcasing these games and then you combine that with the service of xbox game pass which has over like 25 million subscribers it really gets great exposure to some of these amazing creative developers and studios out there making these awesome games. We have some speculation here regarding what could be upcoming for Halo Infinite in 2022. We know that we should be getting co-op and we should be getting Forge mode, but that's all we know right now that's confirmed. We don't have a huge roadmap of what's to come specifically for the campaign. Well, there was this find here on LinkedIn of Russell Madison, who is a principal engineering manager at 343. And there's speculation now that Halo Infinite's campaign expansion could be coming this year. As he says here in his profile, onboard a new leadership team members with regard to campaign 2022 initiatives, organize and officially kicked off production efforts on campaign 2022 initiatives for the full team and studio, which would make you believe that they have started working on those expansions for the campaign and are expecting to release them in 2022. Now, I hope this is what they do because I don't know about you, but I'm waiting on what is to come from the campaign. That's what I'm most excited for in terms of upcoming seasons. And they haven't given us any more information on that. We They did have that release where they gave us kind of the background on how they're going about with their releases and how co-op is going to be pushed a little further into the next season but it should still make its way out and that forge is still on track but i hope soon they do have another halo waypoint update and let us know what's going to be happening with the campaign we have some positive information regarding guardians of the galaxy as we know this is an awesome game that not that many people played it seemed like because they released it and then they cut the price of it in half literally a month after it came out and then now a few months later they put it out on Xbox Game Pass and they also announced that Guardians of the Galaxy failed to meet Square Enix's expectations. And it has nothing to do with the quality of the game because it is an awesome game, but putting it into Xbox Game Pass has, I guess, increased the success of it and had more people experiencing the game. As this tweet here from Benji Sales says, Guardians of the Galaxy has entered the top five most popular games on Game Pass on console. Love to see it. A lot of people miss this game at launch, unfortunately, but I'm loving seeing it get a big surge of players thanks to entering Game Pass this month. And we can see here from this picture, it's within the top games on Game Pass with huge games like Halo Infinite and Forza Horizon 5, which seem to always be up there, FIFA 22 as well. So, I mean, this is great for a couple of reasons. Firstly, if you're a fan of the Guardians of the Galaxy game, this may prompt Square Enix to potentially want to fund a Guardians of the Galaxy 2, and then, hey, maybe just release it directly into Xbox Game Pass and get that deal right away and have lots of people playing it so they don't have happen what happened with the first one, which the game doesn't meet the expectations. And it just further, I think, strengthens that relationship between Square Enix and Xbox 
and then they'll put more games into the service overall because generally their games do very well you look at games like dragon quest octopath traveler outriders and other ones that have come into the service they had all their old final fantasy games that were in this in game pass as well and these games all generally seem to have a good reception and i'm hoping that stuff like this will reduce the chances that there's a console exclusives with things like Final Fantasy in the future. I know they love to do that with PlayStation. And then, hey, maybe even get Final Fantasy VII Remake at some point whenever that deal, I guess, is officially done with it being a console exclusive to PlayStation put into the Xbox Game Pass service. So we got episode two of Into the Starfield called Made for Wanderers. And they gave us just tons of information of what we can expect from Starfield. And it sounds absolutely amazing. They start off with talking about how they're going for a level of immersion in this game, never really before seen, and how everything we're going to be doing in this game will have an impact on the world, which if you ask me, sounds like this is going to be one of the best RPGs ever made. And this is before seeing any gameplay. They also talk about other things like having the oblivion style dialogue mini games they're bringing that back and making it even better in fact when it comes to that dialogue system they say we sat down and it was funny because we didn't start with let's look back at the old oblivion system but there are a couple of beats there you have to think about what's my risk here which one do i want to choose we didn't want it to be a system where there was definitely the right thing to say it feels like you're having a conversation where you're actually trying to persuade somebody of something. As far as the new systems dialogue, I think it's definitely one of the most successful ones we've had. So if you're somebody who liked the Oblivion dialogue system, or you just love very deep and enriching dialogue where everything you choose as your dialogue option is going to have an effect on what is the outcome. And it's there's no right or wrong decision in these dialogue systems. It's just kind of how you feel, what you want, you want your character to be like, that's what you go with and i think that's awesome to look forward to i can't wait to see how the dialogue plays out between the different characters within the starfield world some other great stuff they talked about what had to do with the graphics themselves and the character models for npcs as well as your character and how it's going to be a big level up from previous games so that it's, there's more immersion there's more impact when you're communicating with these npcs so you really feel like it's a real person i guess on the other side of things and just brings you more into the story, into the game, which I think is awesome because player models, people are gonna be nitpicking that, people are gonna be looking at that, looking at the graphics, and if they give us these really beautiful player models, I think it will just increase the overall enjoyment and immersion of Starfield. But they also go over the different factions you're gonna be able to join in this game, different storylines, different playthroughs. It sounds really cool. There's four of them. There's the United Colonies, which represents the future of the Space Republic, idealized the Free Star Collective, which is like the space Western fantasy, Ryujin Industries, which represents the corporate life, which they believe has one of the best starts out of all of the factions. And they're also gonna allow you to join the Crimson Fleet, which are like the space pirates who are the bad guys. So if you wanna do an evil playthrough, you can do that as well, which I think is just awesome that they're giving you that choice. And finally, they give us our first look at an in-game companion called Vasco. And this looks like it is the actual in-game graphics of what we can expect. And if you ask me, it looks very good. Now, it's interesting because a lot of people after they showed off this video, we're complaining, we're naysaying in the sense that why haven't we seen any gameplay of Starfield yet and that they aren't excited for the game because they haven't seen gameplay. And generally, I would say that makes sense. But with Starfield, I've said this in multiple videos, I don't really care that they haven't shown us any gameplay. I'm still extremely excited for this game. It's one of those ones for me is the exception because Bethesda, this is kind of how they always market their games. They do really cool stuff like this, which just gets your imagination going and starts thinking about what can we expect from Starfield? What are the amazing ventures we're gonna be able to go on? And then you jump into the game and you just kind of explore and figure it all out rather than it all be ruined with gameplay trailers kind of showing off everything that you can do in the game. And then they generally show off more of the game way closer to launch if you're looking for the gameplay. So I have no fear that this game is gonna be absolutely amazing just from what they are talking about from the pedigree of the RPGs that Bethesda creates. I'm extremely excited for it. 
And man, I can't wait to see what comes down the line. And as we get closer to release, we're going to be hearing more information about it. Anyways, guys, that's it for me. Let me know your thoughts on all of this stuff specifically. What games are you excited for from ID at Xbox? And what do you think about Starfield and episode number two of Into Starfield? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. You knew here, you enjoyed what you saw. Consider hitting that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your support. And I'll catch you in the next video.